Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I recently bought this Maxsun A520 motherboard on Amazon at £49.99 at the time of upload. It sits amongst some of the other, albeit bigger brand, cut price options here in the UK. First things first, the box art. This is a very welcome inclusion in a world of plain and boring packaging. This isn't just an A520M Challenger, it's an A520M Challenger, woo! That's the impression good box art gives. Inside the decorative enclosure we have a three year warranty card, IO shield and single SATA cable. Table. No manual, but some basic documentation can be found on the official site. Look at this thing rocking VGA in 2024. We do have HDMI as well, of course. Imagine a VGA only motherboard these days. I don't know if I'd laugh or cry. Probably cry from laughing, actually. There's also PS2 keyboard and mouse ports. As for the internal connectors, well, everything is pretty well labelled. We've got a colourful front panel header here, which makes connecting all those pesky cables easier. The basic aesthetic of A520 is everywhere. Uh, two DDR4 RAM slots, a single M.2 slot, two fan headers, and of course a Gen 3 PCIe graphics car connector. Nice to see a VRM heatsink, though, and 8-pin CPU connector for extra peace of mind when using more power-hungry processors. Not that you probably would be. We certainly don't need the extra stability for overclocking because it's A520 mate. You have to ask yourself if the sacrifice is worth what may only be a small saving compared to a B550 board. If it is then this looks like just as good an option as any at the entry level AM4 price point. I actually bought it because of the on paper 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5000 series CPU support as stated on the Amazon listing page. It'll support G series APUs with the latest BIOS as well apparently. Of course this sounded ideal, I regularly test processors and having one basic ball to see if a processor works before sticking it in a gaming build or selling it on sounds perfect. So let's see if this thing delivers. First of all I stuck this old fella in the board, my Ryzen 3 1200, one of the first proper gaming CPUs I owned. Physically the AM4 socket is the same and sometimes older gen chips will work in newer boards despite the lack of official support, at least Mac Sun are upfront about it. Unfortunately, and just like me at my year 6 school dance, it was rejection. The board said no thanks and refused to display a signal. I then tried my Ryzen 5 1600 again with no luck. I guess a BIOS update is needed. No word of a lie, I bought this brand new and it arrived with a thin layer of dust on the box so I guess it's been sitting around for a while in need of some attention tension in the form of an update. This may not be the case by the time you're watching but I certainly hope it's the case here um, because it'll be a simple fix for this what seems like a minor problem. To do this then I swapped out the tired old Ryzen chip and slapped a 5700X in this thing, hey presto the whole thing fired up. The first thing I noticed was the BIOS version dated 2022, it's currently running version 3.3G. There have been a few updates since then, all of which are available on the Mac Sun site including version 3.8G which is the only one that says Ryzen 1 to 5000 support. When I bought this there was dust on the box as I said and it was new so I'm guessing it's been sitting in a warehouse a while with what was the latest BIOS at the time. The BIOS itself has a fair few options, it's far from the most basic thing I've seen. We can set fan speed, enable AXMP for the memory, resizable bar, adjust the graphics configuration, everything you'd expect from a basic A520 experience and perhaps a little more. Perhaps more than what a user of an A520 board might be interested in playing around with. But we do need to see if the multi-gen Ryzen support claim is actually true of course. To do this we need to download the latest BIOS which comes with a folder and flashing instructions which are actually really helpful. I couldn't find an option to flash from the BIOS directly so we need to put the EFI folder on a FAT32 formatted USB. You need a 32 gig drive or 32 gig partition for a FAT32 format so bear that in mind. It's then just a case of turning the PC off, removing any hard drives, restarting, turning off flash write protection in the BIOS and then saving and restarting. If the USB drive is still plugged in, the flashing process may begin automatically or hitting F11 during restart will open the boot menu where you can select the USB drive. In my case, it did start automatically. After the flashing process, the message FSO EFI boot will come up and then we can remove the USB stick before hitting Control or Delete once more. I removed my hard drives earlier, of course, so the system booted straight into the BIOS, where everything had been defaulted but the BIOS version had of course been updated. It's here we can tweak any desired options again such as memory frequency or AXMP before one more switch off to reattach the drives and one more hit of the delete key to enter the BIOS and set the boot options. Oh my goodness, I am actually worn out. Not from doing all this, just from reading this script, seriously. Of course, the 5700X was still in the system at this point, so I let it boot into Windows, used it for a few hours playing various games, editing, etc, and no issues. Of course, the 5000 series wasn't the problem in the first place, it was anything lower than 3rd gen. 
And with this in mind, and with the Ryzen 1200 already sent off to its new home after testing in an older board, I dug the Ryzen 5 1600 back out the drawer, slapped it in my PC, and hey presto, it was finally working. Again, I tested it for a while playing games etc, and it's clear to see the limitations of these older chips, but it was working. I can't say whether or not older Ryzen's will work out of the box if you buy one of these, maybe the BIOS will come updated already if there's a new batch of them in stock at the warehouse. All I can say from my experience with this, one of the cheapest AM4 boards on Amazon, is that it took a little effort to get working with all my CPUs. It's been fine for the past few days since I started writing this script, but I'll be keeping it for the sake of a long-term stability and quality test, but there we are. Thanks for watching, leave your thoughts down below, and I'll see you next time.